Good morning. You are all followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are glad to be with you. Today's lesson is called, or is entitled, Liberty, Not License. Boy, that is an interesting, interesting title. When did you really feel free? The first time. How old were you and what was it that allowed you to feel free? We as Americans have known about freedom. Uh, we wonder, was this the same as Paul's notion of not being imprisoned by sin or enslaved by our actions and beliefs? The source of imprisonment is sin. Jesus has released us. We are no longer imprisoned by our sins of either omission or commission. Paul says we are restrained from sin by our love of others and our desire to be transformed into Jesus' image. Let us start with prayer. Holy Father, it is hard for us to realize that our behavior can lead us toward following in the footsteps and image of Jesus Christ. Be with us as we, on a daily basis, look at what we are doing and try to find ways that we can show your love to others. Our behavior has to do with loving Jesus Christ and being his follower. Please help us to know your will for our lives and have the strength and courage to follow this. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Okay, I think I have the scripture this morning, which uh, is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians uh, 10, 23 through 11, 1. So let us hear what uh, Paul has to say here this morning. All things are permitted, but not all things are beneficial. All things are permitted but not all things build up. Do not seek your own advantage, but that of the other. Wow. <laughs> Eat whatever is sold in the meat market without raising any question on the ground of conscience, for the earth and its fullness are the Lord's. If an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you are disposed to go, Eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. But if someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, then do not eat it out of conscience for the one who informed us and for the sake of conscience. I mean the other's conscience, not your own, for why should my freedom be subject to to the judgment of someone else's conscience. If I partake with thankfulness, why should I be denounced because of that for what I give thanks? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything to the glory of God. Give no offense to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, do not seek any advantage but that of many so that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. So says Paul. And now Barbara will talk about limiting freedom for others. Okay, thank you, Jack. Paul's letter to the church at Corinth represent the most extensive extensive correspondence that we have between Paul and the church. 
Many scholars believe that Paul had received a letter from the Corinthians in which they had written, all things are lawful for me, and that he is quoting that in his response, quote them in his response. In chapter 5, 1, he writes, I write to you in my letter not to associate with sexually moral people in response to report of a man sleeping with his father's wife. In 1 Corinthians 8, Paul lays out guidance about how the question of consuming meat that has been sacrificed to idols. Since idols are not real, the meat has not changed in any way, even if it's been offered at a temple. Christians are technically free to eat that meat. However, if eating that meat has been sacrificed, that has been sacrificed, will cause someone's faith to be damaged, challenged, or them to engage in pagan worship, they should refrain from eating it. This would reflect the love of Jesus Christ by loving them and doing whatever is necessary to sustain their faith. In 1 Corinthians 9, Paul describes the rights he is entitled to as a Christian and an apostle. He chooses not to exercise any of those rights in situations that he thinks freedom might damage his preaching of the gospel. In verse 19, he says, For well, though I'm free with, with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all. Chapters 8, 9, and 10 focus on exercising freedom. So this is the proof that it was an important and significant topic for Paul. The Corinthians have evidently heard and misinterpreted Paul's law, free gospel, as permission to do whatever they want in every area of his and her life. Sounds a little like today, doesn't it? Paul responds to the statement, all things are lawful for us with while all things are lawful and that these in Christ are no longer imprisoned by the law, not all things are beneficial and not all things build up. His concern, as ours should be, is that we should not exercise our freedom in a way that causes our neighbors to go astray or stumble. Paul insists believers ought to be concerned for the good of others. We who have found freedom in Christ should not exercise this religious, this religious liberty for its own sake, but should exercise only what will build others up. In our scripture today, Paul gives advice for this particular situation. If the host didn't say where the meat comes from, believers may eat it, since all things belong to God. On the other hand, if it is indicated the meat has been sacrificed, they should refrain from eating it, not because of a belief in idols or other gods, but because by eating the meat, the believer might cause others to stumble. This specific situation illustrates bigger issues of how Christians exercise freedom. So as we run into situations where we don't know what to do, we more or less need to see how our actions will look to others. And they had a question, the freedom versus nurturing faith in others. One of the reasons that non-church church goers give for not attending church is the church is full of hypocrites. As we live our life today, uh, we need to look at each thing we say and do to see if these words of actions will cause a non-believer to think we live our lives on a daily basis differently than we do on Sunday mornings. Do we show that we love God and love our neighbors and treat everyone the same or do we go out to try to make ourselves look good by going along with the crowd? Right. Very good. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, Betsy, your turn. All right. We're going to talk about freedom from sin for love. What's the difference between freedom from and freedom for? This is where Christ says we are freed from the power of sin, death, and evil. Our lives are forever changed because Jesus died for us. We are freed to be called beloved by God. We are accepted just as we are. We see the way we are to follow Jesus' rules for our hearts 
and makes ways for the love of neighbor as ourselves. We do not have to win God's approval. We can speak to God about all our personal issues. He will not judge. Christ has intervened for us through the Spirit. Jesus walks with us and leads us toward the Father. Do not harm someone made in the image of God. In Christ, we are freed for love, love for God, our Father, and everything God has made. Thank you, Betsy. Very good comments. Well, this study uh, today brings to a close our quarterly study. And for the past two months, we've been basically looking at the letters, some of the letters of Paul. Uh, I think let's hit the high spots of what we know about Paul as we conclude the study for this quarter. And then I'd like to get into a little different thing about, do we know what Paul really looked like as a person? Uh, we know he was born in Tarsus. Uh, he had a parent that was a Roman citizen. Probably his father was a Roman citizen, which gave Paul Roman citizenship. He was also a Jew. He was a devout Jew. He studied in the temple under the, the, the most famous Jewish teacher. Uh, we know that he persecuted Christians. We know he had that big experience on the road to Damascus where he met Christ and was converted. And we know that uh, we probably wouldn't be here today if it weren't for Paul, because he was the one who said the gospel is for all people, not just Jews. So I think uh, those are some of the facts that we're very familiar with. The Bible, our New Testament, does not tell us what Paul looked like as an individual. But uh, there is a book, which is a part of the Apocrypha, that describes Paul. You know, the Apocrypha were those books that did not make it into our Holy Bible. And uh, yet they have a lot of theological uh, meaning and authority. Uh, there is one book in the Apocrypha that is uh, named The Acts of Paul and Thecla. Thecla, T-H-E-C-L-A was a very wealthy woman in the New Testament that is not mentioned in our Bible, but is mentioned in this particular book that I'm mentioning to you. Uh, she gave up her wealth and position to support Paul as a Christian. And as a result of that, she was convicted by the Romans of heresy. And according to the story, she was to be burned at the stake. And when they tied her to the stake and put all the wood around her, there was a very heavy deluge of rain that basically made it impossible to burn her, and she was released and continued to follow Paul. Well, in that book of the Acts of Paul and Thecla, there is a section where Paul is described very intimately. Uh, Onesimus, uh, one of Paul's followers, is going out from Antioch to meet Paul, who is coming from Iconium. And Titus, another famous follower of Paul, tells Onesimus, you need to understand who Paul is so you can identify him on the road. And he says the following, Titus does. Paul is small in size, bald-headed, crooked legs, well-built, eyebrows which come together a long nose and full of grace. So you have a description of Paul. I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> well, getting on to stepping into the world, uh, the last verse of the scripture that we read today is one that sort of has bothered me over the years to some extent because of one word that it used. Paul says you are to be like him, imitators of Christ. You know, in our world today, when somebody talks about an imitation, they're talking sometimes about something that's false. But I think what Paul is talking about here is that we should be, as much as possible, 
like him and like Christ. What exactly do you think he means about being like him and being like Christ? I think he means that we should be imitate, imitators of Christ's love. Uh, everything that Christians do should be focused on love for God and love for mankind. So the big question is, how can we be imitators of Christ here and now uh, in 2023? There's a few ways that we'll mention. One is to pray for others. If you pray for the good of others, you are practicing agape love, which is the type of love that Christ promoted and did. Number two, you should listen to others. You know, frequently there are people who are talking to us that really are pleading for some type of advice or some type of help. Uh, be a good listener is certainly a trait that we need. Show generosity and kindness, a simple thank you uh, to anyone, a clerk in a store, for example, is well appreciated and refuse to go along with others when it compromises your Christian beliefs and values. And uh, I've been in situations like that, and it's, it's tough to do, but Christ wants us to do that. So having said that, we're going to close here this morning, and Barbara's going to close with prayer. Okay. Thank you, Jack. Good comments. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the lessons we have studied this quarter. Help us to understand that even though we are free from the laws of the Old Testament, we are to love God and others. We need to live our lives to make disciples, followers of Christ. Please help us to live our lives to nurture others' faith instead of turning them away from it. Be with each person during this Thanksgiving season as we spend time with our loved ones and give, let us give thanks for what you have given us. Be with the lonely, the sick, the homeless, ones with mental or physical challenges. Show us if there's someone that we should help. Be with each person at Waverly Road, the staff, and each member of the congregation. We have some who are struggling right now. We put them in your hands. Be with them and the medical staff that's treating them. Give us the give them strength and patience. Thank you for your mercy, love, and forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy yes. Thanksgiving to everybody.